What you're hearing is the sound of the creation of beauty. The click-clack of a speeding shuttle filling the loom as it weaves the material into unique and beautiful rugs. These are the looms of Glenn Lyons, who along with his family weaves custom order rugs the old world way, one at a time with craftsmanship that can only be acquired with years of experience. At his loom shop just five miles north of Standish on Wyatt Road, you'll find Glenn and his family producing hundreds of rugs from all sorts of material. Even as Glenn's granddaughter sleeps next to his weaving mother, lulled asleep by the rhythm of the looms, Glenn tells us of how he first decided to begin a world of weaving. Well, I was to the place where my wife had to help me and out of bed and dress me. I, I couldn't put my own shoes and socks and clothes on, and I had part of a loom give to me. And so I was uh, fooling with that loom, trying to get it to work, to, to have something to sell, mm -hmm. which I sold the loom, and after it was gone, I decided that that was a big mistake. Uh, I should have had something to do, and so I built another loom from scratch. I bought a print for a dollar and built the loom myself, and uh, it, it was made from pine lumber from the lumber yard, and it just couldn't take the beating. And so after 110 rugs wove on that, why, it, uh, it was retired. And that's when I went to Davenport, Iowa to buy this loom here. My goodness, so you actually built your own looms there in the very beginning? This, you got... this little loom right here, I cut the trees out and back here to build that. I built two of them. My I goodness. said I'd never sell them, but I did sell one last summer, and it went to Idaho Falls, Idaho. Can you tell us a little bit about the different uh, parts of the, of the loom that you've got here? The, these, these parts back here are called the harness. This part here is the beater. The beater. And, and the part that goes across here, that's the shuttle. That was a shuttle. That's the shuttle. Okay. Okay, and you have to leave a big arch in your, in your warp, or it'll draw the sides in narrow, which would, which would spoil your rug. Mm -hmm. The shuttle, and, is that what makes it semi-automatic, or? The, because because it, it changes the harnesses, harnesses. and and shoots the shuttle across, that's why you'd call it semi-automatic. Otherwise, you'd have to be doing that yourself, right? Other, otherwise, on, on the other looms that I have here, you'd have to change the harnesses with your foot and push the shuttle through with your hands. Ah! Oh my goodness. This loom here was not designed to be a four-harness loom. This, this loom was designed to be a two-harness loom. If you notice, these two harnesses here are different than these two back here. Mm -hmm. and, and the cams underneath that operate the loom, they're made from uh, steel fence posts, 3 8 rod. And, uh, and the pieces underneath the loom down here are supposed to be cast iron. And I just took a, a piece of oak 2x4 and sawed grooves in it and, uh, and it serves the purpose. It works and does just as good as the, as the bought in looms. Mm -hmm. Now how long have you been doing this now? I started back in 1979. Mm -hmm. That's, that was when I first started, and, and I, bought, I bought the one loom, and then I kept finding looms from time to time, and I had 11 of them in my shop at one time. Really? 11 and, looms? And today, I have four of these big ones here, and I have a, a LeClaire here, I have a Pendleton, Pendleton sitting over there, and the other little loom back here, it was homemade. I cut the trees behind the house to build it. Mmm, my goodness. How long does it take you to build a loom? Do you have any idea? Well, it takes about three, four days to, to build it. Uh -huh. the, oh it well, the, the gears on the loom, my boy had a machine shop in here at one time, and, uh, and he cut the gears right here in this building to, to put on that little loom. Mm -hmm. In fact, these looms today are better than the, the day they came out of the factory because we made our own gears and uh, case hardened them so they don't wear. And like the star gear that's in the back of this loom back here, the originals was just a cast iron one that was that you could hold it in your hand and see that they weren't equal. And I had a gunsmith make my first one, and after that, when my boy got a machine shop, uh, he made the rest of them for me. Oh my goodness. Now, Glenn, I see here a, a rug wrapping up around through here. Now, when you do a rug, is this one consistent rug here and you just uh, cut it where you want the rug to end. I mean, I don't see you going through this every time you wanted a rug and restringing this, do you? I mean, no, for separate no. rugs? No, That's I, a lot of work. I, I don't. The, this, this has several rugs on it right now. And right here, you can see that, that this rug is completed up to this point. And so this is where I would be starting another rug right here. 
And so I put that stick and that piece of music wire in there to make my separation. I see. And then afterwards, I pulled those two out and I put a piece of masking tape. You'll see there's masking tape hanging on every loom, mm -hmm. and you'll find that there's there are scissors hanging on every loom. Every place that I work, there's got to be scissors hanging and, and uh, masking tape. Them are two very important things. And so right now, I'll show you how that I take the, the rugs off of this loom. I'll move my shuttle out of the way here so it doesn't give me any more trouble. Flip this dog back. So and, we're making a so, rug. So this, this is a denim rug. And so now I just cut, I cut this rug off right here, right down the middle of that masking tape I told you was my best friend. Uh-huh. And so there's, that rug stays on the loom. I'll show you afterwards what, what the purpose of that is. So here's another rug that's, that's coming off. I cut again across here. So this keeps those loose ends in line, doesn't that it? That keeps everything in place until I'm ready to hem them on the sewing machine. I see. Oh, you've been a busy person here. How many rugs do you have here? Looks like you've got quite a few. And you could keep on going uh, depending on how many rugs you want. Well, you, after you get about so many on there, it's necessary to take them off because it keeps your tension tight. Now, see the rugs that I just took off were rag rugs. This is this rug here is yarn, and that's a beautiful rug. Mm hmm. So as far as rag rugs, you would feed uh, actual pieces of rag through these instead of the instead of the yarn. That's right. Okay. All right. Now, Glenn, you've been doing this for so many years, but who in the world taught you the art? Is it self-taught, or how did you uh, find out what you're doing right and what you were doing wrong? Well, I, I never seen another weaver work until I started playing with the loom myself, and so I guess you'd have to say that I'm, I'm self-taught. Trial and error, more or less, eh? Yes, and, and there was times that I would, I would come out here and spend a half a night when I'd get a new idea trying to figure out something to make it work, and... Uh, and and so I've I've had I've had some real real experiences. There were, <laughs> there were times that I made a mistake when I was threading a loom, and you'd have to tear out half of the material mm. across the loom. How many hours would you say is into a rug like this? I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, from, setup from, work, and from the time from the time that you start uh, taking the overhauls apart and cutting them into strips and. And, and preparing your material and weaving it and, and hemming it up afterwards, I'd say there's probably about six hours in that rug. Oh my goodness. And what are we doing now? So now I'm putting, I'm putting this rug back here. So now every, every string, everything is, is tightened up and, and even and ready to go so I didn't lose any time. Time and patience is what goes into each of Glenn's creations, along with a lot of concentration. For instance, in this pattern, Glenn tells us there are 11 different foot pedal positions to keep track of. When working on a delicate pattern like this, you have got to remain focused. But as you can see, the results are beautiful. Another time-consuming portion of rug weaving is having to restring an entire loom for another pattern. Everything has to be done precisely in a job that will take over six hours to complete. A true labor of love for Glenn and his family. Are you going to be passing this on, this art on to your family and, uh, and keep this uh, tradition going in your family? Or? Well, I, I think my daughter-in-law will probably one day end up with all these looms. Mm -hmm. uh, my little grandson, when he was three and a half years old, he wove a strip of material that was almost perfect, six foot long. He worked three days at it to do it. And, and so uh, even a, a child enjoys doing this type of thing. In fact, both of my grandsons, even yet today, every now and then they come over and they say, Grandpa, I want to weave. And, and so they just make a little mess on the loom, but that's all right. I don't mind. You don't mind. <laughs> uh, producing something like this of quality and beauty is something that uh, anybody can be proud of. But you do enjoy it, though. I enjoy so. every moment of it. Well, Glenn, we see a lot of uh, labor of love here, a lot of quality products, handmade. Ah, Weaver's Delight right here in this little room. We'll be looking for more of these beautiful rugs throughout northern Michigan. All right, thank you. Thank you.